All right, I got open bodybuilder Nate Spear on today. What's up, Nate? What's happening, man? What's going on, man? Uh, hot and humid, you know. It's Wednesday yeah. night, so yeah. Well, it's it's. I'm in uh, Jersey, and it's still like ninety something degrees, man. It, and this weather don't want to let up. Like it just keeps going. Yeah, it's crazy. Where are you at? You're in Connecticut. Uh, and in Southern New Hampshire, so like probably thirty minutes uh, north of Boston. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's not bad. I think everyone's uh, sort of got the heat wave going on right now. So yeah, I just hope it's, it's not. A, I just hope it's not a freezing winter. You know. Well, yeah. <laughs> We'll see what happens. Right. So, uh, Nate, let's uh, kind of start from the beginning. Um, when did you turn pro? Uh, so I turned pro uh, last year's nationals in December. Okay. Uh, so 2021. Yep. 2021, you turned pro. Okay. And um, what weight class was that? Uh, super heavyweight. Wow. So, okay. Yep. Yeah, two of uh, about like 242, 243 on stage. And um, and uh, how tall are you? Uh, five ten. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, when are you going to make your pro debut or you, did you, did you already? Yeah. So I actually did make my pro debut. Uh, it was actually right after nationals in March. I did Boston pro actually. Oh, uh, you did? Got, got the shirt on. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. That, that was a rough one to pick. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah, that, that was <laughs> yeah, that lineup was fucking stacked. Yeah. It but, was awesome though. Like I probably had the loudest crowd cause it's like everyone. I, it's my area, you know? So, yeah. It was sort of, I had to do it because it was the first time they've ever had it. Um, yeah. Sometimes they have shows where they pop up and they don't come back. So it was one of those things I was like, man, I'm going to, I'm already in shape too from December. I had to held on for like 12 more weeks and uh, yeah, I jumped into that and I got eighth right behind Regan Grimes. So uh, not too bad. Yeah, dude, like that, that, uh, that lineup is stacked. I mean, look, yeah. you know, the, the truth is, and you know this, I don't have to tell you. It takes time before a bodybuilder becomes an elite bodybuilder. You know, the guys like Nick Walker or Hunter LeBron, they're few and far between. Yeah. You know, most of the guys are like Samson Dowder. It takes a few years or right. you know, look how long it took Brandon Curry. You know, it, it's just, yeah. that's just the nature of the beast. Like the freaks like Nick and, and Hunter, it's just, you know, that, that that's one of them. You know? For sure. Um, when you were backstage at the Boston Pro, who was the most impressive uh, probably honestly, uh, Steve Kuklo, <laughs> just cause he's like so tall and like wide, you know, yeah, he's a big uh, boy. So, so, sometimes like when someone is tall and like super muscular, <laughs> it's like even more imposing. Right. Yeah. Of course. Um, and then, uh, honestly, um, Justin Rodriguez, just cause he's so wide, you know, he sort of, yeah. he's like waddling, you know, backstage He's just yeah. that big, you know? Yeah. yeah I think, uh, I think Steve is going to take it at Texas to be honest with you. Yeah, he's yeah. definitely got to be the front runner. I mean, yeah. Kamal looked really good, but if they're not going to give it to him against Akeem, they probably won't give him against Kuklo, you know? Exactly, yeah. And, I mean, you got a couple of new guys coming in, but I think it's Kuklo's show to lose, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, are you going to do another show this year or you're waiting until next year? Uh, yeah, so I'm waiting till next year. I'll do, like, I think the plan is Indy and New York. Okay, okay. Uh, so the reason why I contacted you specifically is because I interviewed this girl who's a pro figure girl. Her name is Nicole Sullivan. And um, she came on my show, and it was the first time she spoke about her past, which was a really, really dark, dark past. But she made a complete 180 and is a figure pro, married, in school to be a nurse, has a child with her a husband, um, and uh, is eight years clean. And she told me that she saw you uh, guest pose and you spoke to the crowd and you have a very, very similar story. And that gave her the courage to come on my show, actually, which I was very grateful for. It's crazy. And uh, speak about it. So uh, would you like to speak about your past? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, that's really cool, though. I mean, that means a lot just because. I know she was sort of a little timid about doing that. So it was cool that I had some kind of uh, uh, passed it down or uh, gave her some kind of like uh, courage, you know what I mean? So sort of speak out and not be ashamed of that, you know? So right. that's pretty humbling for me, for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can sort of, so I pretty much um, for me, um, for those that don't know, I'm pretty open. Um, I have drug addiction history coming up. Uh, actually, I just hit 10 years uh, clean in July. Fantastic. Uh, good, so, good. so that's 
just pretty crazy. It, so, so a lot of the story actually doesn't even really, uh, it seems so like foreign to me, you know, and a different person, you know, it's uh, pretty crazy, but um, pretty much I started in high school, like most kids, uh, you know, I just started on marijuana and just sort of, you know, I was like, oh, wow, this is cool. You know, it makes me feel relaxed and whatnot and this and that. And I was always a kid that always got like kicked out of school and like gotten fights, which is always lash, lashing out, looking, looking for attention, maybe something kind of like that, you know? Um, now, did so, you grow up? Did you grow up in New Hampshire? Yeah. So I grew up in New Hampshire. I, I didn't really see my dad much. It was like every other weekend I'd see him. So I think that was part of it. And then my mom also had two other kids from like two other uh, uh, fathers. So yeah. it just sort of like, there wasn't a lot of it. It's hard to, you know, she was working two jobs trying to put food on the table. So yeah. I was the middle child sort of oh, uh, middle child and, syndrome. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Looking back on it now, you can sort of, you know, yeah. yeah you see, see those two more degrees. accurate. I don't know if you could tell those two degrees up, up there. I got yep. one, of, one of them is in psychology. <laughs> uh, so i'm speaking um, your language right yeah, yeah so how old are you now mate so i'm 36 now okay so when you were in high school uh did you get caught up with the whole the whole the oxycontin era so i didn't i, I actually got that in my freshman year of college so my town was like more a smaller town and I don't think it wasn't really like that kind of there wasn't really hard drugs, I guess. You know, sometimes you'd run into some cocaine on the weekends, but that was about the extent of it. Okay. Um, so for me, it was pretty much experimental phase. Anything that was in front of me, I was down to do. Um, and for me, looking back now, speaking of psychology, I, it was definitely something that was like I never felt comfortable in my skin. I was always in my head sort of like, man, I, I'm ugly. I'm not good enough. Uh, you know, No one likes me. This sort of like voice in the back of my head. So it's. When I got high the first time, I felt like that was shut off, you know, and I felt like comfortable and peaceful in my skin. Um, so that was something I struggled with a long time, I think. And that's sort of my why of how I got into addiction. Um, and for me, honestly, all the other drugs I could have, you know, put down and whatnot. And then, like, like I was saying, I went to college up in Vermont and it was a little bit more, you know, diversity. You got people from like Connecticut, New Jersey you know, different, you know, not, not just your, your small little town. So, um, a kid, one of my friends, <clears throat> we were at a party and he's just like, Hey, you know, like you want to try this oxy. And I was like, this was before like the epidemic. And so I didn't really have a lot of education. It wasn't really talked about too commonly. And it was really like, I looked at it as like, okay, this is something that like my grandmother would get prescribed, you know, no big deal. Cause like really didn't, people didn't know like that much about it that back then. Yeah. And that's, how, just, they, that's how they pushed it. They pushed it at, right. as, you know, like, uh, not addicting and yeah, yeah. exactly. If you're like, it's coming from a doctor, it can't be that bad. Right. 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 Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, for me, honestly, it was, I took one sniff and it was like, literally I didn't stop for like two weeks and that was only because I couldn't find any. And then I didn't, this is how naive I was. I, you know, started getting sick and I was like, wow, like, why do I feel like trash? You know, <laughs> I didn't know yeah. about like withdrawals and detox. And then sure. my friend was like, oh, well, you're detoxing. I didn't even know what that meant. I was like, what do you mean? Like, what is, <laughs> you know, and then I had to like, look it up and I was like, oh, wow, that's crazy that I didn't even know that happens. Um, and then like, yeah, it was, I pretty much didn't really ever put it down. And it was really escalated pretty quick. Some, some people's a little bit slower than others, but for me, it, it really takes that one time where I couldn't find the oxy <clears throat> and then, you know, you don't want to be sick. You'll do anything. So someone's like, well, this is heroin. It's pretty much the same thing, which honestly it sort of is, but <laughs> yeah. it, obviously it's not as clean, but you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but it made me feel better essentially. So I was like, okay, you know what I mean? This makes me feel better. I, I can now uh, function and go out and do what I have to do. You know, whereas before you just feel crippled. So anything to get that off, you know, so it was primarily snorting? Well, I ended up uh, moving on to injecting really quick. And then to sort of speed up the process, I, I ended up getting in some trouble for drug dealing and um, went away for a couple of years in Vermont and did prison. And then, um, you know, it sort of back and forth. I get out, go to my mom's, I'm clean, sober, doing well. And then I end up finding someone that, you know, gets the oxys and, hey, I can do this, you know, Fridays and Saturdays and just stop. And then it's like Friday, Saturday, Wednesday, and then it's every day, you know what I mean? So there's always in that back of your head, like, how can I make this work this time? This time will be different. You know, you always, 
Right? I always like trying to control it, but it, it never works, you know? Right. Um, so it, it speeds up and I pretty much go from like, you know, trying to kick it to suboxone to methadone. Cause for most people, I mean, that addiction is going to, you'll, you'll spend thousands of dollars, like, like nothing, you know what I mean? Like you, so if you don't have a lot of money to begin with, you know, you're already, you know, burn a hole in your pocket. So it's hard to keep it going. Um, or you start to escalate to like robbing people and, you know, stealing, selling fake drugs. I mean, anything to really get high. It's crazy because, you know, if you ask anyone to this day, like they would never suspect me of that. You know what I mean? Um, but it just turns you into a different person. And um, yeah, sooner or later, I ended up actually like legit homeless. Um, I was living in a homeless shelter. And then my mom pretty much was like, Hey, <clears throat> like you need to do something. And at this point I already been to rehab two times. So I think she was just like, Hey, I'd rather have you go to rehab and be safe. Like maybe you won't get it, but at least I'll know you'll be safe. That's how like concerned my mother was. Like she was sort of out of my life because she kicked me out, which she's a great mother. And I'm happy she did that because I could be dead because if she kept prolonging it, you know what I mean? Um, so you know, she sent, she sent me to that rehab the third time. And I really, all the other times I went to rehab, I was really gung ho, like, okay, this is going to be the time. So ironically enough, this time when I went, I was really defeated. And I honestly thought I wasn't going to get it, but I actually got that time on the third time. So that was in 2012. And, um, the difference that time was I changed everything. So meaning, you know, I, I, I did an extended state program. So I did more than the 30 days and I went to a new town. I, I met and uh, knew people. So every time I would go back to the same hometown area, you know what I mean? And just start running the people that I knew or whatever, you know, and I knew where to get everything. And so I set myself in a whole new location, not even close to my hometown. And everyone that I knew was in AA and recovery. Um, So that was great. And I just did everything different. So like whatever they told me to do, I literally just did because I was like so desperate. Like, this is the first time I ever thought about like killing myself. Whereas before it was more, it was more like, okay, like I went to prison. Yeah. That's, it sucks, but whatever. Uh, Like I got dope sick with, you get to a certain point where it's like, you're spiritually and mentally broken. You know what I mean? Like inside internally where it's just like, you feel so defeated. And I think that's where I got to that point. And that's how I sort of ended up was willing to change everything and actually put in work, not just wish I'm going to stay sober. So for me, I like I actually got really involved in AA. I did the 12 steps of the sponsor. I started sponsoring people. I went to young people's conferences, like did all the all this crazy stuff with just full AA. And honestly, it saved my life. And like I think I'm a better human for it today. I don't actually participate in AA anymore. Like not anything. Um, it just life got so busy and I moved around and I tried doing AA in a different town and it was not really my vibe. And I don't know, I just sort of slowly trickled out. Um as long so as you're I, clean, man, I don't care if, yeah. if you go to AA or not. As long as you're not yeah. touching that, that junk anymore, it's fine with me. Right. I'm sure it's fine with everybody else, man. Yeah, yeah. How did you How did you go from that to bodybuilding? So, so it was actually pretty cool, like the extended rehab or whatever. So it's like a transitional house pretty much. So you live there, you work, you come back, whatever, and you pay the rent and stuff. And it's pretty cheap. But they started bringing us to the local YMCA. Um, so that was my, I started getting to the gym there. And I just, I really felt like it almost like made me feel like, made me feel really happy, you know? And like, I felt really good after. And it was like, you, you're so broken and emotionally like drained because you've been masking all your emotions with drugs. So now you take all that away and everything is so uh, like peaks are like, it's so high and low, you know? So your emotions are very, you're very, very happy or you're very, very sad. You know, it's not really balanced out as much because you haven't been feeling feelings. So everything's so extreme. So for me, it was like, it made me, um, go in there and I could like unleash and feel better. And, uh, it was just a form of therapy. Um, and I started like progressing pretty quick, you know, like compared to other people and, and then sooner or later, people start coming up to me like, hey, like, you ever think about doing a show or hey, like, or people had thought I was on stuff, but I wasn't, <laughs> you know, so it was like sort of the, and then it started getting in my brain like, oh, maybe I should do this bodybuilding thing, you know. Yeah, when you have people coming to you saying, hey, you know, you, 
you really should do it. That's that's pretty much how you know you kind of have something. Uh, yeah. Because you, you have those people that nobody says anything to, and for some yeah. reason, for some reason, they think they should need yeah. to be on stage. But uh, and it was a similar similar situation when I interviewed Nicole. She did the same thing. She was hitting the gym, and people were like, "You know, you could do really well if you um, if you uh, you know compete, and so on and so forth." Now, how many shows did you do before you actually turned pro? Oh man, actually. So I've actually been runner up at pro qualifiers like nationals and USA is like four times oh, from a pro card. So, so yeah. I was really, I was really close, but I honestly, I got a fast start. So in 2016 was my first NPC show and I won three overalls and then I got my butt kicked at nationals. So that's a good teaching tool for some people out there too, that think they're ready for nationals. It's, I won three overalls. So got like last call out. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a totally it's a different, ball different game. game. Yeah. That, that I, um, I tell the story all the time, but I did a few NPC shows and I won a few shows and I had the trophies in the back. And then I was actually, uh, I, you know, grew up in New York. So I went to go talk to Oscar Arden because he, he's a brother, yeah, yeah. you know, and I'm like, oh, he, he trained me for the team universe. He's like, yeah, definitely. And then I went to team universe in 2013 <laughs> to check it yeah. out. And that's when John Meadows turned pro. And, I, and then, then I came home because I was already like 36 years old. I came home and I told my wife, I was like, I'm kidding myself. This is a, this is a, I would, I could never look like that. I'm going to waste my time, my money. I'm never going to be able to look like this. And it was John Meadows. And I was like, uh, yeah. I was like, uh, we're, we're, we're done here. Bodybuilding was nice. But I, I just, that's it. Yeah. So, um, so go ahead. So you came in, uh, in 2016, you, uh, won three overalls and then you took a last call out in the nationals and then go ahead. Where'd you go from there? Uh, so I, then after that, I was like, okay, I need some time off. I need to, you know, put some size on. So I took a full calendar year off and then I came back at USA's and I got like uh, seventh, but it was like closer, you know, I think that's what people need to understand too. When you're on the national level, not everyone's going to go from, you know, their first national show and turn pro. So sometimes it's like, keep chipping away. Right. And keep showing up and getting better. Most so for me, it was, yeah, yeah. So for me, it was like 16th and then I got seventh and then I came back in 2019 and finally got second. Wow. So that was like, oh, shoot. Like, I, I didn't really think I was I was like, OK, first call it would be sweet. So I got second. So that was like a pretty big deal. Yeah. And North Americans is like, you know, I was like, damn, like uh, it's pretty serious, guys. And then um, and then I kept going and I got I did nationals and I got third, which at nationals at bodybuilding, it's top two gets a card. Oh so I missed God. another spot. Yeah. And I literally did the same exact thing the next year in 2020 with, uh, so I actually did the North American Nick Walker. Oh, wow. <laughs> he turned pro, yeah. Okay. So I was third, I was third there with him and in, in that class. Okay. Um, and then same idea. I went down the nationals, got third. And then I was like, okay, I need to stop doing this North Americans nationals thing. I need more time. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I took a little more time and then I came back this last year, you know, with a little bit longer of an off season, some good improvements. And finally, uh, you know, sealed the deal. Unfortunately, I got second, but still pro card and it's still it's super a, heavyweight. It, exactly. It's it's a it's a pro card. And if you turn pro, it's a super heavyweight, you know. This is an animal. Uh, to Carlos. <laughs> Carlos. Oh, yeah, I've had him on several. Carlos, actually, yeah. I've had him on twice. He's, yeah, right. You know, you, he's a freak, too. <laughs> oh, he's in. And he's, do you know how fucking smart that kid is? He's got like, uh, I, yeah. I don't, he has several, uh, like, he has several, um, uh, like not bachelors, but masters and doctorates. Like he's got like a oh, lot of education. Yeah, he's like scary smart. Yeah. Uh, so during this whole time, are you are you uh, are you working and are you going to AA? Uh, so yeah, so I, I it was pretty cool actually. So I I slowly you know started climbing back the grown up world ladder, if you say. Um, meaning I I had DWIs, I had felonies. So when I got back into the working world, I literally had to start out. I, I worked at Taco Bell making burritos, you know what I mean? Like eight bucks an hour, yeah. but that's all I could do. But, yeah. you know, I, I was a hard worker and I slowly after a year, I, they promoted me to assistant manager and then they moved me to a general manager. So the last like eight or nine years, I've actually been a general manager in the restaurant business. So, um, and I, I finally, maybe a couple of years ago, I got all my felonies expunged. Um, so like literally when I was, I just moved in this apartment, I was telling you, it was pretty cool to get my record checked and it's, they send you the results back and it says 
zero, you know, criminal record. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty badass. Cause I mean, a lot of people, even though they get felonies, they never get them off, you know? So I, that's what I like to cool. hear, man. I mean, listen, I, I've, we all make mistakes, some worse than others, but if you could change it, um, then, you know, then it's probably all worth it because the experience teaches you how to be a better person. And obviously that, that happened to you. Um, that's a, that's a tremendous, tremendous story. So you're still working in the restaurant business. You're still working for Taco Bell or another restaurant. So I actually, funny story is actually, um, in the fall, I fully, um, committed to coaching full time. So oh, I'm coaching right, about good. 60, 60 people at a time. Ah. So right now, so things are going really, really good. So that's great, I'm, man. I'm really happy with life and it's crazy to look back and I can't even imagine how I'm like here right now. You know what I mean? Like as far as like in this position, you know, and I got a guest posing this weekend in Vermont. Um, so it's pretty crazy. Like <laughs> everything that's happening for me, you know, you know, uh, you know, I'm not a very religious person, but apparently God has a plan for you, man, because uh, you went from, I mean, rags to riches. It's a tremendous comeback story, you know, um, can you tell me about prison? How long were you in prison for? Uh, so I was in prison for two years in the state of Vermont, and it's actually pretty crazy. So they actually, Vermont is a smaller state, so what they do is they actually ship you out of state um, if you do prison time. So I was actually down in Oklahoma <laughs> doing most of it. So they took you down in a bus, all handcuffed, and then they bring you back when your time, term is done, you know, like a couple months early, and then you sit in the Vermont county up there until you get out so now, what, pretty what, crazy. if you don't mind me asking what was it that you went to prison for uh so sale of heroin and then oh. uh, sale of cocaine okay so, so i got deal. yeah they got my door kicked in everything so i got set up and all that stuff which i mean everything happens for a reason right you know so look at me now you know <laughs> yeah right exactly so when you were in prison um you still were using you weren't clean yet no yeah it took me a while honestly for so i was you know in prison and i was i i had stints of like getting clean you know what i mean but i was never really like locked in like yeah. i was this time because like i said i've like for anyone like i think you really have to change certain behaviors too you know what i mean so a lot of you know drug addicts will still get they'll get clean but they'll still do like addictive behaviors like maybe using women or um you know um, lying and stealing so you know what i mean like that kind of stuff um my my uncle this is the first time i'm telling the story actually. my uncle uh was a heroin addict and he actually died before i was born and my father was the one that would always bail him out of trouble and um we're originally all from brooklyn so everybody would go to rikers island you know and uh you know my father would you know instead of bail him out you know, you know sometimes he would leave him in there and because yeah. uh, my my grandparents didn't speak any English, they were from Italy. You know? Okay. And um, when my when my uncle got out, he, he told my father, "What are you what are you kidding me? There's more drugs in prison than are on the street." <laughs> yeah. And is that the same? Is that accurate? Yeah, you can definitely find pretty much anything you want in there. Um, I think not all of them, but there's a good amount of guards are usually bringing stuff in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's changed or not, but yeah, right. <laughs> definitely it was the case. The, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, were you in maximum security or how did it work? Uh, so you go in maximum security for the first month and then I sort of, you sort of work your way up into a little bit better behavior stuff. But I will say, honestly, I think, yeah, prison, like you said, besides the drugs too, I think you just develop a more crim criminal mentality. Like everyone just literally sits in there and talks about, you know, how much drugs they've sold, um, how badass they are. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, no yeah. one's in there really like, you know what I mean? Like preaching positivity and stuff like that. It's more like who's the, who's more badass and all this kind yeah. of shit. You know what I mean? So it's. Did, were you approached by any, uh, like, uh, you know, what car did you sit with? Put it that way. Uh, I mean, luckily like the place I was in wasn't like too, too bad, but I mean, you definitely sort of stayed with like your own color just cause it did that's just how it was set up when you got in there. It wasn't really, but I never, luckily there was no pressure to be like, Hey, you got to get this kind of tattoo or be this kind you know what I mean? You just sort of, but it was more like, you know, like people like just different races sort of segregate themselves with others and 
they didn't, it wasn't like there was beef, but it was just like, we didn't really talk to each other. You know what I mean? It was just sort of, okay, we sat over there, you sit over there and we don't really, you know, every now and then like something would pop off, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like Rikers or anything. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's amazing how it is in the world. And then you go into prison and it's like, just, you know, you sit with those people and you sit with those people and that's, and that's really it. You know, um, it's, 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 it's really unbelievable. What was the craziest thing you've experienced when you were in prison for those two years? Uh, I mean, I definitely, there was a handful of stabbings for sure. So that's pretty crazy. Cause you're, I mean, it, you don't really think about it in the moment, I guess, <laughs> but then you're sort of like sit back and you're like, Oh, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> um, and then like a lot of, you know, people getting tattooed in there and stuff like that. Um, you know, people just trying to sneak behave. It's like, being in your mom's house, you know, and trying to sneak around your mom, like that's what it felt like. The CEO is like, okay, everyone's watching, like yeah. when the CEO is gonna come around and all this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, it's it's like I said, it was like more. It's almost like you got better at being a criminal by being in there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's what the that's what the Boston Boston George said in the movie uh, Blow, right? And he said, yeah. I, went in, I went in with a. Uh, <laughs> bachelor's of marijuana came out with a phd in cocaine right? yeah for sure so when you said that you were homeless um you literally in the streets or were you in a shelter or so i was in a shelter so it was in the winter and luckily up here they have like what they they have like a seasonal shelters in the churches up here mm-hmm. so i pretty much they, you'd stay in the church they'd just give you a cot and then they'd kick you out in the morning and you'd sort of figure out your day and then you just go back and you know and you could get meals at uh there was a church that served like lunch every day or whatever and stuff like that so i was in like a decent populated area at least so there was sort of resources but it was definitely like miserable man because like the people you're around too are just you know what i mean like okay like not people i want to call friends i guess you know (laughs) yeah 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 i I, I... most of them are going to be lifetime homeless people unfortunately like that's their thing. You know what I mean? Like it's the same. So the same people you see holding like the cardboard signs are the same people like I'm at the shelter with, like sitting with at lunch. Like not that it's, you know what I mean? Any thing against them, but that just tells you where I'm at, you know? So right, right, right. it's like. Now, when you were in that position deep down, did you know that I'm going to get out of this or were you hopeless? Uh, yeah, it was pretty rough. I mean, I, I definitely it was hard to see light at the end of the tunnel for sure. Especially like I, like I said, it was, it's hard. Cause you're not really like, okay, I need to get out of this position. I was still in the mentality of like, okay, I'm waking up and I'm dope sick. I need to go, you know, get a fix. So it wasn't really like I'm planning out, okay, how am I going to get an apartment? How am I going to do this? How am I going to be a better person? It was, I was unfortunately still in that spot of how am I going to, you know, find that was all that really mattered is like, how am I going to get high today? You know, it's pretty crazy. But and you said that you had uh, thoughts of uh, self deletion. Unfortunately, you can't say that word in front of YouTube for some fucking reason. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So it's unbelievable. Like literally, they will suppress your video if you say that word. Oh uh, shit! Sure. There's like a bunch of words. I know. I got to go back and delete. Yeah, it. yeah. But there's like a bunch of words like that. You can't say that. You can't yeah. say. Oh, you got to say. Uh, you know, when a man forces himself on a woman, you got to say great. Uh, you can't say uh, real words. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, did you have a plan? Did you ever attempt it? Did you, how, how well thought out was it? Uh, I mean, it wasn't really thought out. I was just like a couple of times I tried to see how long I could like hold my breath in a pillowcase, but that was about the extent of it. Oh, okay. Okay. So it was, was yeah, it was, I wasn't say it was, it was definitely like just sort of more like thoughts. It wasn't really like, okay, I'm going to put this into action, but it was definitely a point that I never reached before mentally, you know? Okay. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to get off that topic because I'm getting, fucking depressed. Right. I'm getting fucking yeah. depressed, you know, and, and I have a pro bodybuilder here and I want to talk about bodybuilding because I'm a huge bodybuilding fan. And anytime I have a new uh, pro bodybuilder on it, it gets me excited. I fucking, I fell in love. I'm, I'm 46 years old. I fell in love with bodybuilding. I was 15 when I saw, uh, I think it was Flex magazine. When I saw Sean Ray with no shirt on, leaning up against the Ferrari, and he had the he was rocking the flat top back then. Yeah. And that's when I just fell in love with bodybuilding. Obviously, genetically, I didn't have what it takes to go pro, but I've always been a fan, you know. 
So there's a lot of, uh, and the thing is with social media now, there's a lot, all the gossip that you used to hear in the gym <laughs> is now on social media. You know, it's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, you used to hear little things here and there and blah, blah, blah. But now it's like, you know, either Trujilli's talking about it or, uh, or Fuad or uh, right. Strength and Power and so on <laughs> and so forth. So we got a couple of new guys coming up. I, I mean, I think, I think in the Texas Pro, um, I think it's Steve Cooklow's show to lose, but we you got uh, Marvin uh, Fitzwater, who's doing. Yeah, he's real good. For he's sure. real good. And who was the really tall? Uh, Andrew Jack. Andrew Jack, and he seems to be yeah. the talk of the town right now. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Uh, oh, and of well, course we have we... Kamal in, in that. Run yeah. Time. I don't, I don't think he'll get a really great look at this show because I don't think he'll be in shape, unfortunately, just from the pictures I've seen. And I, when I saw him turn pro, I think he might be a guy that's going to take him a little bit of time to get in the proper condition he needs. Because, you know, at these pro shows, if you're not in the top proper condition, you could be as good as you want to be, but they're not going to give you a chance, you know. Um, so I, 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 think it's, I think if he can get the conditioning down, I definitely could see him as a top three Olympian because, like, to, for example, like his quarter turns are so good. I don't need to see any more. Like that's right. how good he is. You know what I'm saying? Like a, that reminds me of like throwback stuff. Like, you know, when guys used to take quarter turns and you're like, damn, like yes. these quarter turns are amazing. And yeah, sometimes yeah. now it's like, you, who, who, what quarter turn? What's that? Like, don't even like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, let's get right to the mandatory. So when someone has quarter turns that good, I'm just like, geez, like that's, that's deadly. You know, he reminds me of a Tony Freeman. Oh Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know if that's a good comparison, but I mean, the small waist, the wide shoulders, the wide back, the flaring quads, you know, that's what he reminds yeah. me of, the Tony Freeman. And I think he could be a little a little better. I mean, if he, he's very tall, isn't he? He's over six foot tall. Yeah, he's 6'1", definitely 6'1". Yeah, so he's I think he could, if you could put on some more weight in the offseason and fill out right. that frame a little bit more, like maybe 10 pounds or something like that, I think... I don't, yeah. know, I don't know who's beating that. You know, I don't know. He's got the, he's got the tie-ins, you know what I mean? He's got... Um, like the structure and just mm -hmm. everything's put together so well, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, now what about, I had uh, interviewed uh, Marvin Fitzwater. He's another guy that I was, you know, what's funny is I was always a fan of the mass monsters, the, the super yeah. heavy weights. I was always a, but I was never that kind of bodybuilder. I'm a bodybuilder, but I was never that kind of mean, bodybuilder. Yeah. You know, I always had more of a pleasing physique, if you will. Um, but I was always a fan of the guys that were just, I don't, I, maybe because I'm an 80s baby, I was just, yeah. Oh, so when I see Fitzwater, I'm like, he, he reminds me of a Branch Warren or, 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 yeah. or a younger Dorian Yates or something like that. So it's like, right. okay, you know, I want to see this guy do well. What do you think? What do you think about him? Oh, he's really, he's really good. I think um, he's got all the pieces, you know, he's got big quads that are nice and round. Um, he's got a good back, good glutes, hams. Um, yeah, he's definitely good. I mean, I remember I, I didn't compete within the same class, but we sort of came up with around the same time. He turned pro before me, but um, so we sort of, you know, knew each other that way. And he just keeps getting better, bigger, a little more density. Yeah, um, definitely. He's, he's good, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed by him. Yeah, so so am I, to be honest with you. I don't think he's um... – I think, too, like um, – so when he turned pro at North Americans, he was, like, peeled. And then I think the couple shows that he's done, he was a little off. Yeah. So I think if he comes into this show and like nails the conditioning, like he's going to definitely be a, be a big shock. Cause I think some people after the conditioning, you know, on his pro debut and stuff, they sort of wrote him off a little bit. Yeah. So I think yeah. if he comes back in dialed in, like he was at North Americans, he's definitely going to shock some people. For yeah, sure. well, like I can see him being like three or four. This in this show. Yes. Yeah. This, yeah. Is, yeah. A rough, this is a rough lineup. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and he's got the right people behind him. He's got Branch and Brian Dobson. Yeah. Who I, I've, I've been to be both of them, and they are a wealth of knowledge. Even even as Trish Warren, you know, I mean that yeah. that is that is a wealth a wealth of knowledge. If anybody could get in shape, it's fucking Branch Warren. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, so uh, I think he's he's going to do well. I don't know who works with Andrew Jack, um, and I don't know if Steve Kuklo still works with with. Gina Davis, right? Is that yeah, I think he. I think he still works with her. Yeah, still works with her. Yeah, okay. And I think uh, Andrew is working with uh, uh, George Farah. Oh, okay. Well, you, okay. you got George Farah. For... Got George Farah yeah. in the corner. I mean, you know, you really don't need yeah. more than that. Um, right. So last week, and I'm actually, I live in Jersey now. I actually know uh, Akeem, and he's been on my show. Oh yeah, I know Akeem. So nice. 
No, yeah, super good dude. Um, yeah. uh, and his wife. Uh, I mean, I don't, you know, we shoot the shit when we see each other. It's not like we're good friends. Yeah, anymore. yeah. So I was kind of happy he won, but I thought they were going to give it to Kamal because Kamal's conditioning was insane. But do you think that they gave it to Akeem because they didn't want to waste that open spot? Because Kamal said he's doing the 212 in the Olympia. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's hard. I mean, it could be. I mean, at the end of the day, I think I think um, it depends on who you talk to. I mean, I think what I, it was funny because everyone at the show said they thought Kamal was going to win, like after yeah, judging everybody. And I, yeah, so it was crazy. So, but I will, I will say, I do see if they said Akeem, like at the end of the day, like there is a muscularity component, you know what I mean? So, I, they, I wouldn't, I wasn't as mad as some people were because I mm-hmm. could see why. Hey, you know, we're going with like sort of mass, you know, this is like a muscle show. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, and, and Akeem's shape is like so crazy. Um, yeah. but yeah, the conditioning thing, obviously Kamal smokes him there. <laughs> yeah. So it's hard. Like, do you, and, and Kamal's not really missing anything. Right. I mean, he's pretty complete head to toe. Right. Um, his, his shape could be a little better, but it's hard. Cause honestly, I think it's apples and oranges a little bit. I mean, if you want to just go with straight conditioning, you know, but I think for me, I'm a, I'm a big shape guy. So if a guy has good shape and he's pretty much 95%, I might give it over to the guy conditioning. That's hundred mm-hmm. percent. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. The one thing that, uh, that bothers me about, um, social media is that, you know, a guy like Akeem now is getting all kinds of shit from yeah. trolls and whatnot. And it's like, dude, they didn't give it, you know, they what? gave it to Akeem Williams. This is he's not a nobody. He's not yeah. a shit body though. Okay. He got six at the open. Olympia. Yeah, g- give me a break. Six. You know, it's it's and it's not like and the guy's, you know, he's a he's a monster of a man. He's yeah. huge. You know, he's like a building. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, so he's obviously gonna outmuscle these guys, you know. Um right. personally, I thought Kamala had won. I wasn't disappointed yeah. when they gave it to Akeem because, like you said, you know, he's got great shape. His his conditioning was typical looking, and yeah. he just has so much fucking muscle. Yeah. I mean, he's just a huge human being, you know. So I, you know, and let's face it, in the open, in the open Olympia, they they want the big dudes, you know. They, they, yeah, they want the muscles. They it is the thing too. I think you know because they happened to Steve Kuklo is like he didn't get the qualification the previous year. So I could see what you're saying as far as hey, we only got a couple more shows left, and Akeem is like one of the top 10 guys in the world like and right. we want to get him in there you know and then if he he goes to texas and then it's like him and kuko so who's not going you know what i mean so right right right, right. i could definitely see that yeah yeah i mean it's it's definitely a possibility um uh i don't know how much politics is involved uh yeah you know uh, uh you know uh, i've had some stories like i had jose raymond on and he told me a story about uh when he was doing the the arnold 212 and they gave it to Hide. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, he, everybody thought he should take it. And yeah. he, he said on my podcast that he actually saw Arnold go down to the judges' table. Well, I had I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. He saw one of Arnold's cronies go down to the judges' table. Yeah, and, yeah. And talk and talk to him and so on and so forth. See that much I could believe because Arnold was always more of a shape dude. Like he he he, yeah, he, yeah. he loves Cedric. You know, and he loved those guys with great shape and small waist, and but right, and uh, he obviously doesn't like the small guys because he's not the two twelve category. Yeah, yeah. And he obviously doesn't. That's like crazy. The, I know. And he obviously doesn't like the women because he doesn't have bodybuilding anymore. Women's bodybuilding. And uh, if you ever watch Hyde, he's like an amazing poser too. And I know Arnold eats that up. Yes. Like his his routines are pretty crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Speaking of Hide, um, and he has a. Uh, a, a, a gym with um, Iris Kyle, right? And oh, yeah. pa- powerhouse. And did you hear yeah. that about the gossip with him and Milos? Who I'm turning, I'm turning into a big oh, fan yeah. of Milos. You know, <laughs> really turning into a big fan of Milos is because he don't. He's everywhere now, man. He not he's only everywhere. is he everywhere, but he calls people out. Like he called out uh, yeah. Bob Ciccarello on DJs. Uh, he called out yeah. Iris Kyle on RX Muscle. I mean, he. <laughs> And and it's not like he's pulling shit out of his ass. I mean, he's right. he backs it up, but like he's pretty honest yeah. dude, you know. And he's one hell of a trainer. And he was, yeah, and sure. he was. I mean, I could see both sides of the coin. I mean, if you, I've tried doing monster shit sets. 
Yeah. Uh, and it's impossible if you go at five yeah. o'clock after work, you can't do it. Much. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. impossible. Right. Um, but at the same time, you also know that that's what he's famous for. That's what he puts his guys through, you know? Right. And, uh, uh, so what happened with him and Hyde? Uh, basically, uh, Iris, uh, threw out Milos out of the gym. Uh, she, she was blaming it on, uh, he was taking up too many machines because of his, uh, uh monster. Because it was monster yeah, sets yeah. and so on, <laughs> which at first I could understand. But then once he got, once Dave Palumbo had him on and they were talking, I was like, "Oh, well, that makes more sense." Okay, so supposedly <laughs> she, she also, you know, and he would they hired him as a master trainer. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And it, it wasn't like he was going there, <laughs> right? Just going there. They hired him as a master trainer, so because they wanted to, you know, they wanted guys like Regan there and Logan and yeah, and then yeah. and then and then Iris would still. Um, Iris would still uh, uh, oh God, uh, make them pay. She would still yeah. charge them. She would still oh, charge really? Regan Damn. and she still charge Logan. And he was like, That's I could crazy. take them anywhere. He goes, I could take them, you know, in Las Vegas, I could take them anywhere. And posting uh, every day in your gym. It's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. You know, and then um, then he said that he actually had a gym where he had to ask Iris to leave um, a few years back. <laughs> so it seems like it was totally like, like, like a, yeah, you know, yeah. a vendetta. And I'm right. a huge Iris Cobble fan. Like, yeah, she was a freak. She, to she me, was. Iris, to me, Iris got like when you say top 10 bodybuilders that ever existed, <laughs> you have to have her in the mix. Yeah. Because she, she fucking won, so dominant. She yeah. won 10 Miss Olympias. And I don't know how many all the classics. Even, yeah. And most of them weren't even close. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Right. She just like, rock, rock shit. Yeah. 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 So that was a huge, it's, it's just funny. Me and my wife went to uh, Orlando last year for the Olympia and uh, we didn't know where the expo was. And my wife, you know, she's looking around and she doesn't know why it was Kyle is and stops her and asks her for, for you know, where is, is the expo? And she was nice enough to tell her. I'm like, I apologize for yeah. my wife. I'm like, she doesn't know that you're like the greatest female bodybuilder. The legend. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was pretty good. That's so uh, one more question, man, and then I'm just going to let you go. It's another bodybuilder question, of course. Um, we got a lot of new blood in the Olympia this year. Do you think anybody's going to break new, anybody new going to break into the top six this year? Ooh. Yeah, I know. Man, that's, rough that's tough. I know. Honestly, oh, man, I think I'm going to get a lot of heat for this one. <laughs> Only if, if you watch it. If anyone can do it. Uh, honestly, I think maybe Blessing can. Oh, okay, okay. I think well, Bless maybe not six, but like seven, eight. Yeah, pretty close. Um, but I think I, I'm impressed with uh, Bonac this year too. The the resurgence of a William Bonac. So yeah. I'm interested to see how he does. But I think the only reason why I say Blessing is he has that such freak factor that draws your attention. Like the, mm -hmm. obviously the upper body is just ridiculous, right? The the waist. He's got the ab wall that's like etched out. He's yeah. got just big huge pecs and delts and just everything is like so bubbly so I, th I think a lot of time that like when you're judging it just goes your eyes go to that kind of stuff mm -hmm. you know yeah um obviously his legs need to come up a little bit but he has like that throwback sort of what was that guy like edgar fletcher do you remember mm -hmm. he looks like mm -hmm. one of those guys from like yeah. back in the day yeah with the small waist and a lot yeah absolutely yeah for, for me and people seem to be forgetting about it because it's a while back now for me i think samson Dowda could really do some uh, damage yeah that guy is pretty much definitely he's almost flawless. And I don't yeah. know if you, I don't know if you've seen his recent pics. I think he's oh uh, yeah, he's 320 yeah. now. Yeah. He's 320 with abs with yeah. fucking abs. He's he's a monster. Um yeah. actually I lied, I have another question for you. Sorry. <laughs> I'm here. Um, do you, I'm do good. you think do you think Rami's gonna get number three this year? Oh man, I don't know, it's tough. Oh. It's hard because I feel like Remy's sort of a flake, man. Like yeah, he is. every other he is. every other Olympia is like so locked in. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's weird. It's weird to have an Olympia that's sort of like, uh, like I didn't really train for three months, and you know what I mean? Like, yeah, right. right. Uh, like it's sort of strange. Like, um, honestly, it would be pretty badass to see like Nick and Remy one and two like call out. Yeah, just because yeah. like the battle of the mass monsters. Yeah, would be pretty, just uh, pretty exciting. I think <laughs> I think Brandon's got one more left in him. I would love to see Brandon. I think last year, I would have gave it to Brandon last year, personally. Yeah, I just, a lot of people said I'm a, Like I said, I'm a shape guy. I think he was in good enough condition. Rami wasn't, like, peeled or anything, but... It's just so um, I just, just so don't... Yeah. I feel like 
it's a little disheartening though because i feel like rammy's got some funky stuff going on you know like the flow is if you look at him from like remember when he did the new york pro at his pro debut sure his everything just flowed really well and now it sort of seems like i don't lumpy. know it's not yeah. <laughs> a little lumpy yeah a little lumpy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and his yeah. lats don't like flow as well like his shape is just not as good as it used to be you know yeah i don't yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I hear what you're saying. Man. Um, yeah, I think Brandon's got uh, one more left in him because when he comes in shape, I mean, oh yeah, again, he's a, like you said, you, you're a, a shape guy. He is his shape is yeah, amazing. His silhouette yeah. is amazing. But um, I'm gonna thank you for coming on and being so honest. And um, I mean, uh, the amount of respect I have for you now after you came on and told me. This whole story is is you know insane. I have an insane amount of respect for you, man. Uh, and Thank I'm you, brother. I appreciate you're, that. You're very welcome, and I'm glad that you are out there telling your story and you are inspiring people like Nicole Sullivan to t- tell her story and and make a change. Yeah. And hopefully, it makes another change. The thing is, it's not an uncommon story in bodybuilding, though, is it? Yeah, that's no, for sure. It's real, and I don't know why. I don't know why uh what the deal is but i mean you know you're, you're not the only one with that this story in bodybuilding you know and- well for me i just i think it keeps me having that same regimen at every day like lifestyle is really something i need like there's always a goal in bodybuilding yeah so either what whether i'm trying to get like peeled for a show I'm, or i'm trying to grow i always have a, a task at hand what i'm trying to accomplish so my my focus is on that you know i'm not sort of just going about my day and just you know i always have a plan and it, it's sort of like that process is addicting to me i guess in in that form but you know people sometimes will be like well bodybuilding is not healthy and this and that and i wanted to touch on that a little bit because i saw you and nicole talk about it but i think when people don't realize is i'm not good at i'm not like robbing i'm not hurting anyone that's right that's i'm right. also not you know i'm not gonna od like my mom kn- knows i'm safe Right. You know what I mean? She can go to sleep at night. So like those little things are the shit that matters to me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, you know, when you're talking about bodybuilding, it's not safe. It's safe compared to the life you were before. You know, uh, yeah. uh, I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's, you know, bodybuilding is a good addiction as long as you keep yourself uh, balanced, put it that way. For sure. Right? I mean, it's just like anything else. It can get extreme, but yeah. I'd rather have you and Nicole doing this than what you right. were but you know, right. so, exactly. so if an idiot says something like that, just, you know, yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. Where could people get in touch with you if they, if they want you to coach them or whatever the case uh, may so, be? So mainly just on Instagram, it's at Nate Spear, just one word. Okay. Um, at Nate Spear, pretty active on there. All right. I'll make sure that it's in the description. If anybody wants to uh, contact you for, um, you know, training and uh, some personal training or getting ready for a contest or so on and so forth. Awesome. Nate, listen, man, uh, much love, much respect. Always. We'll be in touch. I might actually ask yeah, you to definitely. come on and talk bodybuilding again. If you, if you, yeah. you know, if you ever want to do a re- recap or something. I'm always yeah. Or yeah. I do it with, J- I always do it with Jason Arms. Um, and, nice. yep. and, uh, you know, I might ask you to come on cause I always have like a third or fourth person come on with us. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be great. I would love for you to do that. Um, but listen, man, thank you. Thank you for seriously. My pleasure. Much, much respect, brother. And, uh, you know, keep it going. I can't, are you, uh, do you know what pro show you're going to do next by any chance? Uh, so Indy in New York. So I'll be okay. on there. If you're going to be at New sure. York, I'll, I'll be yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Super, it's like literally 20 minutes away from me. Yeah, that's fair. Nate, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Have All a good right. night, buddy. You too, man. Thanks.